Most of my dreams start fading away the instant I wake up, but every now and then one of them will stick with me as vivid as if it were an actual memory. And there was this one dream I had where I was at this like 50 style diner, one of those burger and shake shacks where you just drive up and the waitress would just whirl her blade on up to you. For some reason I was at one of these things and the waitress came up, dress, rollerblades and all, and bent down to take my order. And it was at that moment I realized my waitress was actually Sam Raimi in disguise. And I was like, you! And he just had this look of fear, like he'd been found out, like I'd been looking for him this whole time. Then he skated off, skirt and all, just into like this bush or something. Never saw him again. It's not a very good story, but that's, that's a... I, I was really upset about Spider-Man 3, and I guess I also wanted like a chocolate shake or something, I don't know. Giant lizards! Hello there, I'm Nick, and this is The Game Apologist, where we look for the good in bad games. And sometimes those bad games are attached to bad movies, as is the case with Spider-Man 3. Now I'm already expecting plenty of angry little comments because anytime I bring up Spidey 3, I end up trashing this trash. But it's the kind of trash you rummage through and sometimes you find some pretty cool stuff. To give you some personal context, back in 2007 I was really looking forward to this flick. I loved and still love Spider-Man 1 and 2, and I loved most of the games attached to those movies. But as revolutionary and important as the first two movies were to the superhero genre, everyone deserved better than this mess. Same goes for the video games, Spider-Man 2 stepped things up and made you really feel like Batman. We have seen better work from all of these people involved with these projects. Like many, I went in hyped as all get out, but left the theater loathing this movie. And, well, a lot of these games when they came out. But even after all these years later, I find myself strangely fascinated by them. So much so that last year I played all the video games released for the consoles and handhelds that shared this movie's name. By the end of all of it, I still wouldn't call anything Spider-Man 3, well, quality but I certainly had a newfound appreciation for this weird little part of the franchise and actually completely get why some people adore this movie and these games, ironically or otherwise. There's a very distinct style unique to this black sheep of the trilogy, and simply being attached to such an iconic version of the Spider-Man mythos just adds to all that allure, even all these years later. And clearly the slow burn of Spider-Man 3 works for YouTube videos as well because, well, I made this video last year and all of a sudden it has views. What? I'm very thankful, don't get me wrong, I'm really proud of that video. But a lot of folks were quick to point out that I left out two games in my little showcase. Two games I was fully aware of, but just dismissed. Surely there was nothing worth talking about. I mean, they're not even console games, who cares? Well, you guys do apparently, and today we are rectifying that mistake and plugging in those missing gaps from the list. And we'll start our plugging with this. Mm-hmm. Take it all in. This is the Spider-Man 3 plug and play from Jack Specific. And I know what you're thinking, what part of the body are you supposed to play this thing with? Now I could wiggle this thing around all day, but there is still a game ready to whip out all over the screen, so let's take a look. Now when I do Game Apologist episodes specifically, I normally break down what's bad about the thing before I talk about what's good, but we're gonna skip that setup because when it comes to more obscure stuff like this, I tend not to find a lot of coverage in online, so instead I'm gonna show you as much of this weird oddity as possible because, well, nobody else is. We start things off with the iconic and overused first shot of the mopey little bug. From the title screen we get to a, quite frankly, adorable mode selection screen where you guide Spider-Man from light pole to light pole to choose between story, arcade, or some more technical options if you'd like. We'll start off with story mode and, oh, that's, that's precious. Okay, well, have to admit, first time I came across this game I, uh, didn't expect it to be a shoot 'em up So you swing through New York shooting down New Goblin's many gadgets in between taking shots at the Goblin himself. You'll be randomly rewarded with health and power-ups like multi-shots or a needless boost in speed. It's basic shmup stuff. Problem is, usually those games are designed around a jet or some kind of flying machine or character. Spider-Man, as you might be aware, does not fly. He swings. And the game takes his momentum and height into account. Now regardless of when you shoot your spider spooge all over Harry's gadgets, the shots at least always stay consistent. You never have to worry about shooting under or over the gadgets. But one of the buttons lets Spider-Man punch and flail, which can do a substantial amount of damage, but you need to be real close to Harry and you need to be at the peak height of your swing for it to land. I guess it's a bit of a reward if you can time it well enough, but ultimately there's not much use for this unless Harry is just up in your spandex. To be fair, he will do that fairly frequently. 
but even with the web shot, you can really take a massive chunk of his health, if not defeat him outright. You also get on-screen prompts for, I, I, I don't know, quick time dodging? I don't know what this is. The attacks and buttons aside, the movement is... Well, I mean, it makes enough sense considering that you're swinging instead of flying, but I wouldn't play this right after R-Type or Gradius, or, well, any actual shmup. A massive amount of this genre are bullet hells because they require pinpoint precision from the player's movement of the ship. You don't get that with Spider-Man, but this isn't a bullet hell. The enemy layout seems to take account for Spider-Man's movements. I never had much challenge taking down robots or grabbing power-ups, but it did happen all the same, and it never felt like it was my fault. It felt like the games. Again, this is not a massive issue. At least the web power-ups and health move off-screen fairly slowly, and ultimately I didn't have any issue taking out the goblin. Well, while I was on easy mode, anyway. Trying it again on hard difficulty certainly upped the challenge. I only beat it because I got lucky and somebody dropped a health power-up. But nothing changes a whole lot on the harder difficulties. The enemy layouts are still the same, they just do more damage. You have three levels of this, and it can get tedious pretty quickly. Complaints aside, I can't help but find charm in a Spider-Man shmup. Not exactly a must-play of the genre, but if your nerdy interests cross paths between comic books and classic gaming, this is pretty precious. Considering the character, platform, and every other thing working against these guys who made the game, I appreciate this exists, even for novelty alone. But it doesn't stop there, because once you beat the third level and watch Spider-Man's little victory breakdance, we are then introduced to what is the actual meat of the game. Going forward from here, every form of gameplay is basically an offshoot of a classic side-scrolling brawler. And also like old school games, I have to imagine this thing came with an instruction booklet that would have probably made things a little more handy because I was a whole lot of confused when I first started off here. You kick things off by but kicking people and punching them in the face. And once you clear out the baddies, the game tells you to web up. All right, now I'm web swinging and I, what's going on? As you can see, there are some extra points and some other nonsense sprinkled around here. You might also notice there are some arrows pointing downward, so... I guess this is kind of a hub world, and we need to drop down where the arrow points us to drop down. So we'll, uh, just head on down and, um, nope, I, I guess I overshot that a little bit. All right, let's, uh, turn it back around and let's get another... Okay, there it goes. All right, bye-bye. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can, but can he not? Just for a minute? Can I, I just want to go down. I just, there, I want to go down there. I can't get him exactly where I want him while he's swinging. Be it with these stupid arrows or trying to nab the little health thing right there. Thankfully, this is not actually as bad as it seems. Even if you don't hit the arrow, you're likely to get where you need to get going. Granted, I did unintentionally pop back into areas I had already cleared, but overall it's fine. As for the power-ups, once I cleared an area near a health power-up, the game normally shot me straight up into it, so uh, no real problem there, I guess. Ultimately, this web-swinging portion just kind of feels a little bit needless. The main chunk of the game is gonna be on the ground. You're basically rolling through here, clearing bad guys and saving the same guy over and over again, be it from a hanging ledge or from some random thugs playing tug-of-war with his bag. That's my purse! I don't know you! All while this is happening, you need to keep track of your health as the black suit will drain it. You refresh it by clearing out thugs and saving lives and just violence in general, and also with the help of fans. Occasionally, you'll come across sections where you'll drain your fans' life force to feed on it yourself. Just like what I'm doing with this video right now. Yeah, I, I save your comment saying you're not a fan. I, I, I already know. Once you clear out every section and save who you need to save, which, again, just this guy, this one sprite, that's it, you then switch over to a level where you need to keep knocking Chaos Emeralds or a uh, dinner plates out of Sandman, all while beating up his thugs. Once you hit a certain criteria, either you or Sandman will smack the other into the next section. <laughs> On higher difficulties, you have to knock out more jewels or more, more plates, and these tiny little ninjas can gank them from you if you're not careful. But you're mostly just punching the dude in the face, there's no real strategy here. And the way you collect health is a little bit different this time in this particular level, as it comes flying out of goons like they're pinatas. These sections go back and forth for a while, until the level finally ends, and again, it's pretty tedious. And all of these gameplay styles will just swap back and forth for multiple levels, until the final couple where you're finally introduced to Venom. This still uses side-scrolling, but this time you have to navigate a maze of an unfinished building while fending off Venom and Sandman. On easy 
mode, you can just beat the crap out of these guys over and over again with little worry, but they will keep respawning, so there's little point to it. But on harder modes, they do provide a little bit more stress. There are little triggers you can set off to get them off your back for a minute. And I'm not gonna lie, Spidey's draft neck didn't make for the most responsive of controls while I was trying to hop from floor to floor here. Still, it's a cool enough concept. Once you rescue Mary Jane, you get the, the, the wrong Spider-Man logo. Uh, uh, neat? While there is a healthy amount of variety, outside of the goblin stuff, it's basically the same set of mechanics. And that gameplay is not great. Not as horrible as you might expect, it's pretty mindless, but it's competent enough. If you enjoy those Spider-Man brawlers from the 16-bit days, you, you might find some enjoyment from this. I'll, I'll be frank with you guys, those games were not super great either, but still probably a step above this. And again, play on normal or hard, because easy mode shows you just how meh this whole thing is. And what is nice is that this thing will save your score and unlock new challenges, but it's all remixed of the same stuff you've already seen. And the arcade mode just lets you pick what game style you want to dick around with instead of having to do everything in order. I mean, oh, okay, well, there are some instructions that would have been nice in the story mode. But that's basically it. This is the Spider-Man 3 plug-and-play game. Now, there's no ROM for this thing for you to find, and honestly, outside of a YouTube video explaining what this is, there isn't much here to justify going out of your way to track this down for yourself. Unless you're a sucker for goofy gaming toys, a hardcore spider collector, or nostalgic for this very specific thing from your childhood, Childhood. Online, I'm seeing this thing for around 20 bucks on eBay, which I believe was the original asking price back in 2007. But either way, adjusting for inflation or not, it this is not worth $20. I've seen it in thrift stores a handful of times, and I spent like five bucks on mine. For that money, yeah, it, it was worth my time for five bucks. As dismissive as I sound, please understand that that's just me being honest about recommending this thing to an average consumer, being honest about the actual quality of the game provided. But truth is, I love this thing. Yeah, this game is far from perfect, but it was fun enough, and <laughs> I love this stupid stick. While they were prominent, plug-and-play games were one of those things I would just pass without even giving a side-eye glance to. But ten years later, in a pile of junk on a thrift store shelf, it definitely caught my eye. And that's exactly how I came across this spider stick. And honestly, I'm glad you guys kept bringing this sucker up in the comments, because this did turn out to be an interesting little game. But that's only one of the two games you guys kept pointing out to me. There was also a Java-based mobile game released alongside this movie. And like the plug and play, I was aware of its existence, but very dismissive all the same. I played a good handful of these type of games back in the day and, well, <laughs> just did not see the point when Sony and Nintendo's handhelds just trounced these little nothing games. Looking back on it now, once again, I find myself intrigued because, well, since I passed it up back in the day, there's now this treasure trove of weird Java games for me to discover. And it's fun seeing how developers crunch these suckers down onto phones. Being a big Hollywood release and existing on every other platform possible, Spider-Man 3, of course, had to have a mobile port. And I gotta tell you, I was kind of impressed. Now, again, I've not played a whole lot of Java games, so I don't know how it compares to other action platformers. And there's an immediate problem I noticed in terms of these awful MIDI tracks. They're not the worst things in the world, but you're not going to be jamming to these things. And they all just... end. They don't loop, so once the song plays out, you'll just spend the rest of the level in silence and... Well, now we're all just uncomfortable, aren't we? Middies are weird. We used to pay money for these things. Like seriously, we used to give actual dollars to have our phones bleep some nonsense that barely resembled a song. What a time to be alive. Okay, now that I've got my dumb joke out of the way, for what it is, I have to say the developers did a pretty commendable job making Spider-Man work on a game you're meant to play with just your thumb. It's nothing life-changing, and you certainly had other portable spider experiences you could go with instead, but this is kind of rad. The animation is fantastic, at least while emulated. I'm sure this would have ran horribly on whatever I was sporting back in the day. And the controls work commendably well. You even unlock new moves in between your first few levels. And the game will require you to use these unlocked skills, or at the very least set up scenarios for you where you can play around with them. And you can stick to walls, web swing, punch, kick, sometimes pull off neat little combos. The game has Spider-Man crawl around a map designed around his abilities, taking out bad guys or Eddie Brock's cameras, or facing off with one of the villains from the movie. Once you get the black suit, you once again need to keep an eye on your health, as the symbiote will slowly drain it. You'll be required to bust up some things, or, well, bust heads, if you want to keep your health maintained. 
And again, like the plug and play, I had no issues with easy mode, except for the last level, but we'll get to that. Normal is a nice balance, and hard mode actually proved to be a bit challenging. The boss fights are a little hit and miss, but for the most part, again, I was impressed. The first encounter with Harry just had me punch him until he Sparta kicked me away. Sandman has you track him down in a sewer where you can't stay still, otherwise you're going to get caught in a sand trap. Then you'll fight him almost immediately afterwards in a far more underwhelming fight. I think I'm supposed to drop these water towers on him, but I, I don't know. I couldn't manage it, so I'm sure I was just doing something wrong here. You later fight Harry again, but this time the game requires you to use some of the moves you've obtained in your adventure. This is pretty neat stuff. I did have a rough time of it with Venom for a minute. You can't let him reach Mary Jane at the top of this building, and he'll just combo you off the side if he gets too close to you, and there's not really anything else you can do about it. Once you get knocked down, you're done. And then, of course, once you restart the level, you have to watch the text screens again. It's all super exciting. But after a few tries, I got a loop going by making the symbiote go nuts with the noise I was making with the trash can. Then I'd smack him a bit and smack the can again and just rinse and repeat. I know this is basic stuff, but I like that the game requires you to take advantage of Venom's weakness instead of just running up to him and punching him until he falls down. Once you beat the game, you unlock the ability to choose between the black or red spider suit for any level. Just keep in mind with the extra power of the black suit, if you're not in an area where you can break stuff to regain health, you're gonna have your work cut out for you. There's maybe like an hour's worth of a game here if you play around with the difficulties and replay levels with a different suit, but even that is stretching it. The same goes for the plug and play. Both at least give some incentive to replay things, but the core games don't leave much to be desired after that first experience. That said, I'm really glad I tried these games out. I don't have many Java or plug and play games to compare to, and compared to other Spider-Man 3 games, these are still at the bottom of the list of recommendations. Well, I don't know, now that I'm thinking about it, I had a pretty awful time with Spider-Man 3 DS. I might almost want to play these more than that one. Regardless, for what these are, I'm glad for the experience. Even if a lot of the charm is in the novelty, but I love my spider stick. And the mobile game made me really wish these sprites were used in the GBA game, because these look fantastic. There is more here than what was necessary, and I for one appreciate it. So I hope this video did something for you. Be it satiate your curiosity about one of these things, tickled you in the warm and fuzzies if you haven't seen this stuff in a while, or made you aware of something you might find genuine enjoyment from if you're a weirdo like me and you just love the very concept of these silly things. I still feel like I'm not quite done with this particular topic. Well, topics, actually, be it Spider-Man or Raimi's version of the character, Java games, plug and plays, or even Spider-Man 3. And if you want more Spider-Man from me, well, I did just recently lend my voice to Aki Day's video covering the GBA Spider-Man games. Also, Dave, I just realized I just said your channel name out loud for the very first time in my life, and I don't know if it's Aki Dave or Akai Dave or something like that. I just had a very long debate on whether or not the dude with the long gray hair in Final Fantasy VII was called Sephiroth or Sephiroth. That was a real conversation I had. If you like what you saw, you, well, I mean, like the like the bell or the subscribe. You know how, I don't care. You know, you, you know how that stuff works. If you want to be supportive, be supportive. I'd appreciate it. If you'd like, I also have a Patreon and I'm actually going to be rolling out the first reward tiers this upcoming week. For a single dollar, all of our Patreon supporters are getting early access to the first episode of Sonic Speed Reading. That's a series where I'm going to be covering all things Sonic comics, be it IDW, Archie, or Fleetway, or any of the goofy offshoot mangas and webcomics, all that stuff, maybe even the novels. Who can? Hmm. I'm also working on a ton of other cool ideas there, but point is, I got that there. If you'd like, if you can't, who can blame you? Times are pretty tough for everybody right now, so take care of you and yours, but if you want to throw a buck my way, you can do it that way. Otherwise, just wait like a week or something like that. It's not going to be timed exclusive for super long. All right, that's enough rambling like a lunatic. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Toot toot, web warriors. I said get me giant lizards and I meant it, Parker. You think I don't know the difference between some guy in a costume and the real deal? Get me giant lizards or you're fired.